Hello and welcome to my next episode of the Chrysalis Conversations. So these are conversations and topics which are inspired by questions asked for me, either by friends, ex-clients or in my Facebook group. This question was asked by a beautiful friend in Canada, so hello to her. And she was wanting to get my opinion and my take on ascension symptoms and why do we have them and any other information that can come through. So I'm going to break it up into three kind of parts. One is ascension symptoms, two is planetary influences, and three is what I call um, the void or the void of creation. So what are ascension symptoms? So these are ex physical experiences that our body goes through when we are upgrading and we are really experiencing a lot of new codes coming through or we have broke like a lot of our own programmings, old belief systems, karmic cycles, cultural programmings. And we've had, we're like, we've released this stuff that's holding us back and blockages. So our body then will go through a upgrade. So before we kind of get into why, I'm going to just list some of the, uh, you know, ascension symptoms that are common, but it really is individual and you can have some predominant ones, which you will experience a lot. Sometimes you can go for years and then it comes back you might have some over and over and over you might never experience some of these there is no right or wrong to it because it is your physical body going through an upgrade so here's my list ears ringing or can be blocked or ringing and blocked and quite often it is one ear mine is always my right i don't know whether or not left or right ear means something rather different I really feel like that's something that you can feel into an experience and it's also really important that you don't tell yourself too many stories so you, you're experiencing this symptom that means if it's on my left that there's a blockage with this or, or anything else like that I really feel like it is literally your body going through a physical upgrade now I will always ask a question related to that body part so if it's my ear I will ask is there something I'm not listening to and I'll really delve into that and I'll ask the question for signs because sometimes it can be that your intuition your auditory skills of, of hearing guides and hearing specific guides or hearing different frequencies or things will be going through a specific upgrade so sometimes it can be someone is trying to send your message and you're now tuning into you know something different or it could be complete opposite and it's a reflection of how you've learned to listen better you now can practice sacred listening and even know what that is to hold space for somebody so your ears have to go through um, a massive upgrade because you're now totally different vertigo this is um you know the spins it's dizzy uh, you know you, you can often feel incredibly lightheaded and it, it can vary with just mild dizziness to really really bad vertigo where it's like I need to sit down I'm gonna throw up or fall over or both headaches this is a big one of mine um and they don't tend to go away and they also don't tend to be helped by um any form of drug I actually went through an interesting one with a sinus infection head thing that was not normal in any shape or form and I went through two rounds of antibiotic before I just I just went okay this is this is not normal help I'm in so much pain I had vertigo the whole lot and 
I had somebody who didn't know what symptoms I was going through actually confirmed my what I thought was happening spiritually. So that was a really lovely confirmation. And then I said to Spirit, okay, I can't handle this anymore. I get it. Um, you know, what can I do? And I had three people in the one day tell me to take oregano oil. So I went and got some. I took it. And within 36 hours, it was cleared. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I could have, I could have gone through less pain if I'd actually asked the right questions and been listening to the right things. But that was definitely an experience that had, um, I, I'd asked for an upgrade and I received one. So flu-like symptoms that don't feel normal. So what I mean by that is, um, here's an example. When I came back from Mexico, you know, I was near a lot of sacred sites and everything. So when I had the flu, the flu didn't feel quite like a normal flu. And I also progressed through the symptoms really quickly. So for half a day, I might have the fever and then the next half a day it's in my head and then the next half of the day I'm this and like it was just not a normal progression to the stages of the flu and it when I say it's the flu but it doesn't feel quite normal you'll know because a flu has a feeling to it that you recognize and your immune system recognizes a spiritual flu is you just feel like something's different to it and it's as simple as trusting your intuition. Itchy eyes or anything that is um, are affected by your eyes. So I guess maybe blurriness, um, eyes burning, um, anything that flashes in the eyes, anything that's kind of like that. I don't tend to have too much of this. And I'm more inclined to just go and have an antihistamine because I do suffer from allergies. Not one of my predominant ones, but I, I do know other people. And similar to with the ear, I would always just ask, hey, is there something I'm not seeing? Is there some kind of perception that I need to make changes to? And just kind of think about it from that angle. Am I, am I seeing things more clearly now? Is there something I do need to see that I'm not looking at? And just ask questions around that as well. Lack of sleep. So not, um, not being able to sleep, basically. Um, you're not, not full on insomnia, but really your, your sleeping patterns change and you're not being able to sleep. Oh, conversely, it can also be like getting up at um, the same time. Like I've known this for multiple people. They'll wake up at like 222 or 333 or 3 o'clock or 254, like really weird times in the early morning. And that's the same time every day. And, you know, it's spooked a few people out. But I also just feel like that is part of these symptoms. And I would be utilizing that time instead of freaking out, I would journal or I would ponder, like, is there a reason why I'm waking up or is this just part of the process? Whenever you're experiencing ascension symptoms, I always say, ask questions because then you're utilizing your sovereign ask archetype and you're not going into fear about any of it. What else have I got? I've got tiredness or the opposite where you're just like got extra, extra energy. This is interesting for me because I'm very sensitive to the um, lion skate each year. And some years I will just need to sleep a lot and others I've got so much energy. Same with food. I didn't actually write that down, but that's another one. Sometimes I just not hungry. And other times I'll eat so much and actually lose weight. So real weird stuff can happen to me around that time. Uh, feeling dopey or fuzzy headed, like you've got allergies. So I will actually take an antihistamine and then it doesn't do anything. Whereas then I'm very sensitive to the antihistamines and they usually work. 
So sometimes you can just feel like that dopey, like your head's all full and fuzzy and you've lost IQ points and you're just like not making sense. That can very much be it. Uh, body aches and pains and um, joints creaking and feeling like really old when you're not. And your heart um, also does like a little fluttery uh, races or different things like that. And this this has happened a few times to myself as well. We have tachycardia in my family and I was always a little bit like, oh my gosh, this is a little bit weird. But no, it just happens at different times. So those are some of the common ones. If you were to sit down and Google, um, there would be someone who has compiled a much better list. These are kind of the main ones that popped into my head and I've also personally experienced. And please comment uh, down below if you have a different symptom that you have quite often because it is something that I'm really quite interested in. Now, why do we have the symptoms? So kind of foreshadowed it before by talking about um, on a personal level, sometimes we let go of some big, massive program, belief system, wounding, we've healed something, we've let something go, we've unblocked something. So the natural ramifications of that is you've now got your energy clear and you can then, you know, up level. So mind, body, spirit, so often we will work on the mind and we will um, work on the spirit and we forget about the beautiful body. It will upgrade whether you like it or not. So you have the personal reasoning, so like you've really let something go and then you, your body's cellular structure is no longer holding on to the trauma or the program and it just needs to recalibrate. Another thing is, like I said, with Mexico, you can go visit a sacred site. And um, another thing is people who experience past life experiences, they might go and visit somewhere and they absolutely um, uh, have all these experiences. There's a, a powerful tool called astrocartography. I didn't know anything about this. And my friend at the crystal shop, um, Jennifer, she um, she suggested that I do my astrocartography. And lo and behold, my sun, moon, and mercury, I think, all go through Bolivar and Peru. And so you have these lines on your astrocartography, and if you visit those places, sometimes things are stirred up, da, 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 da. So that was really fascinating for me because, you know, you can go on a tour and you're the only one that has, like, this massive life-changingly crazy things happen. The other person's quite fine. So that's something to, to look into as well. So you can physically go somewhere, which then causes you to upgrade you can be around other people. There are some people who usually, like if I go to an event, the fact that I am going to an event means I have on a soul level, you know, I'm ready for change. I'm ready for the next step. I'm ready to receive something. So there is also a surrendering on the individual's behalf and then the teacher or the person can just totally and utterly activate you and change your life. There's been probably instances that I can think of that I won't go into too much detail because there are other people's um, stories where they weren't expecting to have an activation by meeting somebody else but they inspired an initiationary experience by being near them and then your body then goes through like all the different ascension ascension symptoms because they've had that activation with the person that ties into another reason spiritual activations i know quite often that there has been um people who you know like myself in 2012 
they were very normal. My my Saturn return was happening and around my birthday, I, I was incredibly unhappy, but I was very much a social lemming. I really was just work, get into debt, pay off my debt, work some more, save up, travel, get into debt, pay off the debt. They, the, uh, the repeating pattern of what society tells you to do is deeply unhappy. And um, so I, I had this quite huge spiritual awakening and from out of nowhere, I started to have multiples of these all the time. It's been such an intense activation and time and period of my life. So anyone who is listening to this might, you know, have experienced the same where, uh, you know, in that period of time, it's very intense, a lot of it. And then it tends to peter out a little bit. So for myself now, um, it's only if I'm having a personal initiation epiphany that I will sometimes have these aspects and these ascension symptoms or when I visited Peru and Bolivia. So that's kind of like on the personal level of how we activate them and why we go through them. If you have a lot of trauma and you clear it, if you have cultural programs and you want to step out of it, like your culture is telling you that you must be married and have children and do this and live that life and look after this and everything and your soul's just like, no, 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 I have a purpose and I'm supposed to be off doing this. And I know that that's how our family's been doing it for the last 5,000 years not my story I can't be confined to that and you have to go and break those cultural paradigms and and walk your own path and it's scary as but that's your purpose and passion and what you're supposed to be doing is breaking those cultural cycles of quite often their cultural trains of chaining you into being the one way when we're we're no longer vibrating at that frequency that will 100% activate ascension symptoms and your growth as you're changing and helping you shift along that because you have to physically hold these codes, physically hold these new frequencies as you become a more different person, a more luminous person, a more um, energetically aware person. Now, the second part, the planetary influences. And I also foreshadowed with this a little bit by talking about the Lion's Gate each year. But there is times like the solstices and the equinoxes where there is just such huge um, energy. And those who are more in tune with the earth or who have done more spiritual work will feel that anyone who has a, a shaman archetype is going to be sensitive to the earth's energies and really important days and the cycle this is the rhythm of the planet right if you are not tuned into the rhythm of the planet um then i question you know are you half alive and it sounds dramatic but i really feel like if you are out of rhythm with the planet then um and you're not aware of it, you're not utilising incredible tools that are there for you that our ancients have been using and they're right there for us, you know, start using them. So um, lion's gate, solstices, equinoxes, eclipses, we're about to have a solar eclipse on in three days' time, actually. And... Um, there's lunar eclipses as well. You have, depending on how played in the cycles of the moon, you may also have ascension symptoms in cycle with the moon. Remember, this is all individual. Some people are really tied to the earth. Some people are tied to the stars. Some people are tied to the sun. Some people are tied to the moon. Some people are tied to more animals. And they have like these influences which help guide and aid their journey and it's it's your superpower it's not anyone else's it's there to help you in this lifetime and um 
you know, so some people are more sensitive to the moon. There can be um, huge planetary, um, what do they call them, grand cross alignments where the planets are doing certain things. There is, of course, the um, Mayan calendar that um, picked over in 12, 20, uh, 2012 and going into a different cycle. There is the Vedic Golden Ages, you know, as we're shifting more into the Golden Age. There is so much stuff that can be, you know, planetary influences. Now, here's another one that's huge that I'm incredibly sensitive to, and it is solar flares. And I discovered this accidentally because um, my, my friend who used to have our meditation center at Yukai, she used to tell me um, she would turn off her hot water service during a bad solar flare so that it didn't drain the solar batteries. So she would tell me when she was doing this and I would be like, that coincides when I had extreme exhaustion. And that's how I respond to a solar flare. And I can sometimes have headaches. I can sometimes have fogginess, but my main one is I'll be like going through my day. And then at like two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, and I just like have an hour's sleep and I, I cannot sleep during the day. I, I'm someone that needs total darkness. Um, and if I don't have total darkness, I don't usually fall into the deep, deep sleeps. So for me to sleep during a day is actually quite big. And it is so often the, the solar flares that will cause these little nanny naps at, at times. It's really quite fascinating. So why I call them planetary um, influences that then cause an ascension symptom is because we are responding. It's not a personal growth um, ascension. It is a planetary ascension where it's being bombarded by um, sun codes, um, Sirius codes, Palladian codes, any kind of codes, you, you know, from an external force where you've got Pluto and Saturn in square with Scorpio and Pisces and they're doing this big thing and it's causing this and this and this and this to be flared up for people. And if you sit there and say to me, oh, I don't believe in astrology, I'm going to say to you, that's fine, but millions of people do and we are all connected through our global unconscious mind. Archetypes prove that. Carl Jung has proven that. You, There's so many scientific, I'm sure, ex, you know, explanations and tests and things that have been done. But this is proof. It's not just a quirky woman on the internet telling you this. So just because you don't believe in it, there's millions of your fellow human beings who do, and that is going to add a charge to these belief systems. So you have those planetary um, influences that will then have, and all, all of us having similar ascension symptoms. And I know that this is real because I've had, like, say, the ear ringing. I'll talk to my friend in Milwaukee and my friend in Singapore and myself, my friend down in Sydney, and there's four, five, six, seven people, and they all tell me the exact same symptom at the exact same time, and we haven't talked about it. We haven't sent out a secret code, like, oh, let's all tell everybody we've got the same problem. No, it, it's real. It just happens. And what I see that then is, is that we are meant to be all collectively having some kind of an energetical upgrade. And then that leads us into number three and our final discussion point, which is what I call the void of creation. And to me, this is the, the cosmic mother and it is being in the void. And what happens when you're in the void is you can quite often feel apathy and tiredness and just wanting to like lay on your bed like a dead starfish and it just feel nothing 
and it's just blah. And what's happening during those times is you're in the void of creation waiting to receive something. I personally believe that this is very much tied into the divine feminine. And a lot of us have all been talking about how we want to anchor in the divine feminine pose and we want to live more in tune with our divine feminine self. But the divine feminine is very much receptive. She will, you know, as women, we receive. And, um, you know, that chalice, the vessel, the cup, you, you know, quite often there is a period where you are waiting for the for everything to align and you can feel totally weird and off and it's such an uncomfortable feeling. But if you learn to work with it and when you are feeling that way, it saves you from unnecessary anxiety. I actually feel like a lot of the depression and anxiety that happens in the world at the moment is because we don't know how to work with this. If you're in the void of creation, you need to pause. You need to start asking questions. You need to meditate. You need to paint or write or just lay there and receive inspiration. I have countless it, you know, if I really sat down I would pen and piece of paper, I would probably have, have over well over 100 instances where I will feel that feeling and I wait. And then someone will say something and I needed to hear that something. Or I was meant to be waiting for somebody else to get with the program and they were coming in and they were going to provide a vital thing for me to understand but they had to go through some experiences or I'm supposed to collaborate with two or three other people, but I had to wait for them to be at the time for that collaboration. Or I meant to have something um, that I'm about to purchase, which is really important for my business. And I just don't feel like I should even purchase it. But then a week later, it goes on a massive special so many times I've had an, an absolutely logical explanation of why I've been in the void. Epiphanies, um, I'm about to launch something and they're like, no, 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 just don't launch it, it doesn't feel right. And then I have this huge epiphany and I'm just like, if I'd have launched that without this, it just wouldn't have worked. And the reason I'm adding the void of creation, which I also call the, the cosmic mother energy, is um, it can sometimes feel really weird, kind of similar to when there's a solar flare where you're just like tired or you, you've got like that apathy and blah and, you, you know, so it just doesn't feel quite right. But it's not an assumption symptom. It's a void symptom. And I felt like it really needed to be brought into awareness that it is a thousand percent okay. And it's really, really hard to say to anybody that, you know, being in the void is okay when we are programmed to be busy from preschool. You, you know, your preschool's got to do this, 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 and learn that and do this and have this and have exams and you know, this and then you, you've got to get the best on the tests and, you, and then you've got to get the scholarships if you're in America and you've got to do this, this, this and this. And you're so busy from birth that to then tell you as an adult to do nothing can receive information because it's actually going to put you on the correct path of your divine sign. That's like telling somebody to suddenly start seeing the sky as purple instead of blue you know, um, the grass is red instead of green. It's so cataclysmically different from what you've been taught that it's taken me years. And now that I've really worked with it and I understand it and I don't fight it, 
my underworld journeys into my psyche and my little mini death night, um, uh, black nights of the soul are nowhere near as dark. And uh, I said to the universe, made a deal with them years and years and years ago, I said, if there's something that you want me to change and do, promise not to fight it, I'll do it. And when Thanatos in my cards, the archetype cards I use of Kim Crayons, when Thanatos comes up, it's the card of initiation, card of death, I just sigh. Sometimes I sigh in despair. And I'm like, okay, show me what needs to die and I'll kill it. And I'm talking, of course, within myself what belief system have it destructive this um illusion story i'm telling myself and i've learned to really adapt and work with the void so i highly recommend you do too please uh, let me know in the comments section whether or not um you agree or disagree was there something i missed tell me your ascension symptoms tell me if you have mastered the art of being in the void and the reason i call it the void of creation is because usually the most amazing creations come from nothing the nothingness of the void so i hope you've enjoyed and I'm going to put in the link below the link for my Facebook group if you haven't joined it already. And I'll put a link for my newsletter as well. You get a free meditation if you sign up to my newsletter. And um, so I'll just put some links down below and it just popped into my head. I have a blog post about the embracing the void. So I'll put the little blog post down there if you'd like to do some further reading about the void. My name is Jess Beard, and it's been a pleasure giving you another chrysalis conversation about how your life transforms and answering questions. If you have any questions that you would like answered, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me personally or leave a comment um, below I get notifications from YouTube so I can always find your questions once I um, get that notification it's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you in the next video or in a conversation somewhere much love bye for now